Hey everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to another episode of McCall Media TV, whereby in the last few tutorials, myself, Angela McCall, has been taking you on a journey to do it yourself with your WordPress websites. And we've been customizing a, another website that I need for another branch of my business, which is the point and click puzzle games. And we've basically been building up that website one section at a time, one skill set at a time. And in today's video, I'm gonna not necessarily teach a specific customization of the theme but I am going to dive in and do some more CSS customizations because although these themes do do their best to provide you every kind of tool and functionality that you want sometimes you just need to get your hands dirty dive in and tweak the code to the way that you want it to present your website and that is what we're going to be covering in today's video Okay, good. Okay, so we are going to dive on over into my left hand side monitor screen, whereby you can see I have already logged into my WordPress website in the admin panel. And if I just open up the second tab there, you can see my website. Now I did have to crack on and get some uh, sort of tweaks as it were since the last video done. So I'm just going to walk you through what those changes are and why I've had to play with CSS, which is why I've decided to make this video today. So moving on on down here um, one of the CSS tweaks that I've done is that I've added a box around this uh, section here to give these little images a little bit more oomph as it were or a bit more va va voom. Um, I've had to play with the style settings of this particular button. This is a default button called primary that the theme comes with and it's sort of set the colours for you. I didn't like the colours so every time I use that button primary in my website now, I wanted to customize the colors, so I've done some CSS tweaks there. Again, moving on down, because I needed to get some blog articles and, and not leave those d default ones published on my site, because the site is live, I've uh, quickly thrown together a couple of tutorial, uh, couple of blog articles for you guys. Again, I've played with some CSS, including putting a box around the thumbnail image and brightening up this uh, uh, title, showing here so it stands out a little bit more now if we click on and go through into one of these articles i've also um, enlarged the title of the pages as you can see there um, and there's another css customization because i've created my own border as well around here so i'm going to show you that as well and i think uh, pretty much it let me just look if there's anything else and I had to, to style this category heading as well uh, so there's quite a few bits and bobs and they're all sort of CSS tweaks now I'm going to show you how to do these for yourself uh, right now in this video so let's just quickly go on through and show you where to customize your CSS because there are two locations one is where you should one is where you shouldn't unless you really really know what you're doing and then there's still repercussions so let me explain if you go over to appearance and you come down to theme editor this is the actual code of your site and over on the right hand side here you can see that there is a style sheet now if I clicked on it ironically it happened to be the one that was was loaded all of the styles for your entire site are listed here the only problem is this is like kind of think of this as like your master style sheet any tweaks or changes here will be fine until there is a one press theme update and we all know that these theme updates and tools and plugins are updated regularly including wordpress itself and because at the moment we're working with the main theme and not a child theme any tweaks that we do here could be overwritten next time we do a theme update and that theme may came may, may come with a new style sheet update and it could then overwrite this and basically all those tweaks and changes will have been gone so because of that inside the themes themselves when you go to the customize section there's generally all good themes and I believe it's a WordPress requirement for when you publish a theme has to have this additional CSS type box now it might be in a different location on your theme but it's essentially should be found 
somewhere in your customizer hierarchy there. Now, as you can see, what I've got going on here is all of my tweaks so far in this theme. And uh, it does mean that sometimes you have to kind of trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. And I'm gonna kind of show you and walk you through this. Now, I have touched on this in other tutorials as well. But to give you a quick idea, let's go through to the homepage first of all. So let's look at these, um, these boxes. Now, if you actually have a look here, the, the border so that I could keep it customized throughout the site and use it in anywhere pretty much there is an image. I've created a short line code of CSS here in, in a class. Now what I've done is I've looked at that and I've inspected that specific element of the page and I've looked for class names that are already allocated to those images or features of my site based on the themes naming convention of these classes. And then I've looked for it so I can add a little section to it or I can overwrite previous settings. So basically border, five pixels, that's the kind of light blue color that you can see and it's a solid border like instead of dashed or dotted or something like that. Now, as you can see going down, I've actually had to apply this in lots of different locations because you'd think that one, style of image border would apply to all images and it doesn't because they're all loaded in different ways they're all working in different sections of the theme and that theme is sort of built like a jigsaw where every little piece of the jigsaw has a different section and they just add in sections or remove sections depending whether you're looking at a blog article the home page or, or whatever section of your site so you actually have to go through and anywhere there is an image that you want styled in that specific way you kind of have to investigate the, the the class name and where it's applying it to and then add your CSS code in which is why even though the actual styling line of code is the same I've actually had to repeat it now if you look up here um, we've got this in the uh, tweak now this little sort of dash and a star means I've put it in a comment so this isn't part of the code this is reference to myself so I can remind myself why I've done this Okay, so if we look down to it, as you can see, it's, it's been repeated in all these locations. Now, just to sort of give you a quick tweak, um, I often give myself these little notes as to which section. Now, if you look here, this is the section news, which is this bit down the bottom here. And this one here is the section about, and I've put home page about section. So if I've got, if I can remember rightly, one, two, three, four, five, six, there we go. So now you can see, because I have in investigated what the section about and the section image class names are that populate or style these images on the on the section of the page, I've been able to tweak the style of the border once I've got it on there. And I think the margin at the bottom is the gap between where the text begins and the image ends, which is why I've narrowed it down to 20 pixels, because I think it was 30 pixels. So these are like little tweaks that you can do, and they're obviously all applying to the image HTML tag. Okay, so let me just change, change that back, copy and paste. Now, how do I know, let me publish that so I've made the settings because the site is live. So how do you know what is the name, the section? How do you find this information? So this is how I do it. now. Um, obviously I'm in the customizer here and although this is giving me a really good demo of what the site will look like I always do it live and not on the admin section or, or behind the scenes so make sure you're in the main site itself and then if you hit F12 on your keyboard I've installed um, the lots of the firebag bug uh, sort of tools and developer tools but most browsers Chrome does it as well F12 button generally brings up this kind of like inspector uh, section and you can still see your site up the top here but on this little handle right over on the left hand corner if you click on that to turn it blue and then you move your cursor around the page it's trying without touching or clicking anything just moving the cursor it tries to select different elements of the page so let me just grab one of these images Okay, and as soon as I click on it to fix that's the focus of what I want to look at, it kind of highlights the HTML code down here, and then on the right hand side you've got kind of the CSS code going on that helps power that section. So if we look here, there's the IMG image tag, that's the HTML tag, and then it's got a class name which says attachment, one press medium, then size, 
one press medium and then this one it says a WP post image and so on and so on and so on and so on but if you look over on the right hand side here you get the actual class names as well and if you can see this is actually the code um, that we've got going on here so here is so it says dot which means a class section hyphen about and dot about hyphen image applying to the HTML image tag okay this is what's going on here and if you copy the rule and come over you can paste what the existing one is now let me just come down to the bottom because I don't want to upset anything I've done so give yourself some space whilst you're playing and then um, give yourself some space whilst you're playing and then you can just literally copy the code in from the website which is fine and then you can start tweaking and that is basically how you can start fiddling around with the CSS that's powered by the theme itself okay now um, I've added in a margin bottom I think or I changed it I think it might have been 30 it's 20 and that was the borderline that I've added in so you do need to know an element of HTML and you do need to learn or get familiar with an element of CSS styling if you're stuck W3 schools because I can't always remember all the syntax even though I might remember the name I'm diving between this code Lua code while I'm divine, uh, building my apps then I dive into PHP when I'm doing website design or MySQL, I, I, you know, there's only so much information that I can retain. So whenever I'm stuck and I just want to look at some sort of HTML uh, code, as it were, um, you can dive in on over here, or you've got the CSS up here, and then you can do a search if you wanted to. And there's, for example, borders borders with colour let's have a look and then it can give you some some examples of what's going on and you can always try it yourself if you wanted to so this is always a good way of kind of tweaking your CSS style and as you can see there's a border colour there and so forth and then you can use RGB values and all sorts of weird wonderful things so let's come out of that okay so if you if you need that I will remind you that the uh, URL will be below in the description so coming back to our site we've kind of got an idea now so let's have a look at this button here because I had to go and find this and I'll show you in the theme in a second but if you click on it obviously I've styled it with my appropriate colors but you can see here that it's button primary at the moment like there's a hover version and if you look when the mouse moves over it's very very slightly darker okay so I've had to literally copy that whole entire rule and overwrite it now let me get rid of that um, which is where I've put it down here. I didn't put myself a little note, so let me just do that. So, customization of the themes primary button styles. Okay, there we go. So there I've just added my little note so I can remember in the future. And then what we've actually got going on here, because it's a, a button with two different styles, the, the non-use and the in-use one, we've got the hover over and the um, regular button style so you can see that actually they've got two different color background codes in use and the reason I've had to use uh, things like the word important because it's part of the theme it was clashing a little bit and although the browser was trying to as it was loading the website page was trying to, to interpret which uh, set of rules as it were to work with I was finding that sometimes it was applying sometimes it wasn't so just by adding that exclamation mark at the beginning of the word important I'm forcing the browser to always use mine as a priority over whatever the theme settings are and because we're using all of this customizer CSS section here it's part of the uh, settings that get saved into my SQL so even if the theme has an update and the CSS style sheet that I was telling you about before gets overwritten, our tweaked and settings, as it were, will be saved in the MySQL database and so will still apply. So this is why it's safer, especially if you're not 100% sure on what you're doing, to play here because then you can't upset anything else in your style sheet and screw up your website. So you can always then just delete your own little bit of code and it'll all go back to normal. So that's what I've got going on over here and um, when this bar here is called the call to action bar so I've added it in just to give it a little bit of a, a break separator because there was a lot of white going on so let's have a quick let's publish my savings because I've updated my uh, my comment let's come out of this section a moment and then what we've got here is order a 
order and styling. So what I've done is I've gone in and I've added this bar in by turning it on on the main website earlier on, which I'll show you in just a second. So I've coloured the background, which was all fine, okay, but it came with this button. And then if we go down to the actual section itself, okay, um, obviously I can tweak the text that I wanted to, tweak the button buttons terminology, put in the URL link, and this is where the button pre-styles were, re were set. So by default, this theme comes with like all of these secondary. So that secondary one is kind of a white color. And success is kind of this green. These are all pre-programmed into the theme style itself. There's a warning one. Here we go. That's that kind of yucky yellow. Um, Danger is probably a red. There we go. So these are all great. But because I didn't want to reinvent and have to start fiddling with the HTML and forcing it in, I just wanted to work with names that already exist. So this style, primary, already exists all I had to do was just change the color which is why I then added that little bit of CSS code that you can see down here and just change the colors so I can always use now primary button on anywhere else in the site that I want to add and it's always going to have this style setting so that's another little tweak for you now um, one of the other things that I wanted to show you was let me go to my apps because I've just literally started to publish this app um, at the moment so I'm filming literally the last week of September, so by the end of the first week of October, this should be available in all app stores. But if I go in and have a quick look at here, one of the sections that I've put are some screenshots. Now this is using the gallery section, and as you can see, there's this nice blue border, but this is a challenge that you guys probably will experience to some extent. So let me just come out of here. Yes, I do want to navigate away and be out saving. Okay, so let's go to the post itself and just show you. So here is the post. I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to recreate that section at the bottom. So here's the section that we've got going on already. Okay, and as you click on them, they open up the image in large and then you can click on the back browser. That's all good. Okay, but when you create these sections, it was a gallery. Okay, and um, because I have happened to have already uploaded those images, I'm just gonna select six of them just to show you the problem that you guys will have. So you create a new gallery and you hit insert. Okay, so let me just save the page and then I can show you that it's there. So this is a challenge that a lot of people face all the time. So it's instantly added the gallery um, with no uh, image borders, shall we say. Okay, so down here on the right hand side for this section it does provide you with this thing called additional CSS's where you can create your own CSS style giving a, a, a class name and then add the class name but this is the problem that you have and I'll show you this in a minute so my image border uh, I think that's what I spelled it as uh, bio let's have a look update and then refresh Okay, so what you can see here is, although I've created my own style, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment, it's applied it to kind of like the outer or the parent box of this whole entire section and not the individual images, which means this is when it's one of those things that no matter where you play um, with, you're going to have to get your hands dirty and tweak the actual HTML code for this particular section. So first of all here, um, I turned on the link because I want it to link to the media files and I put them as medium. Okay, and if I hit save there now, when I come over to this and refresh the page, what you can see is these now turn to a little hand cursor, which means if I click in any of these, they upload. So they're kind of working the way I want, but I didn't want this sort of weird border that's not really covering the right section anyway. So to get around that, take out your class name and I'll show you how to make that class in a moment. What you need to do is you kind of have to inspect the section. If you come up here while it's selected, let me just un click anywhere in inside the section, okay? And then you can see there's headings or gallery. That's the gallery before, gallery after, there we go. But if you click in this section, okay, you've got these three dots, okay, and it does say you can edit as HTML. Now, this is the HTML code as the browser will read it in. And as you can see, there's quite a bit to it from the, uh, just to display these six images as thumbnails that are clickable, okay. Now, we do know, however, they are images. And if you look very carefully just there on the screen, that's the first image tag, HTML tag, for this image here okay and 
there's the actual source that's the, the png file how it's once it's been uploaded into the wordpress environment that's how it's where it's stored and how wordpress itself has named the file there's no alternative description because i did it real quick and i didn't add any data in there um, these bits you don't need to necessarily pay uh, that much attention to just leave it because that's wordpress doing its own maintenance is the easiest way for you to to think of it but there's the link so that when it opens the image in full it can see and then you've got some other classes and things um, as part of that but we do know that the image itself is able to have a class if you've done some html in before in the past you'll be able to um, know that you can add classes to it so if you was to write the word class now equals and then uh, double quotes okay to make the class that's where the html class uh, code begins and inside that I now put my image broader name for my CSS okay and then I just literally copy the space directly after the G up to the end of the double quotes to so copy it because I've got six images and then I look down there's the second one and I'm gonna paste it so that's where I've just pasted the second one okay uh, another image there so I'm gonna paste it again and again and again so I've gone down my six images and I hit update Okay, doesn't look like anything's happened here in the back end, but if we come over to our website now and refresh that page, we've now been able to apply a CSS image, sorry, a CSS style just to the image, HTML image tag itself, which is why I've got this style going on up here. So that's how I've got that effect, and you physically cannot get that using the tools and features of WordPress or this particular theme or other similar themes without literally editing HTML because it's trying to, to apply those settings to the outside uh, containing box as opposed to the images themselves. So how do I create that actual my image border? Now if we come back over to our website, I'm just going to remove the fact that there's now two of these on my page because the site is live. Okay. So if we come back over to our theme customizer, okay, and go back down to our additional HTML. So I'm opening and closing comments. This is one of those uh, tags that need to have an opening and closing uh, parameter to it. So, um, right, so there's my class. So a class is defined by having a full stop. I knew a, I was gonna need to make it a class because I wanted to apply it in more than one location. It's not gonna have a single use. Wherever I have an image now on my site, that has an img html tag i know that i'm going to apply this style border as a class so then i give it a name so i can identify it and then basically the curly brackets open and close as a pair tells the computer or the website where this set of rules starts and where this sort of set of rules finish and then as i as i've already sort of played and tweaked i use the same border settings that i've already uh, worked out wherever they are in other parts of the um, CSS styles. So I then added in my border, there we go, I've lost it, there we go, my border, the colour, the stroke width is in five pixels and making it solid and that's how I've done that. Now I could also have done things like I could have added a padding um, all the way round, 20 pixels maybe, let's just see what happens to that. Let me publish like that and come back over here and refresh okay now you can see i've now got this 20 pixel padding so there's lots of different html settings that you can apply to images and css styles that you can apply to image tags so it is a case of just playing but then this this kind of level of uh, customization gives you the power to do things just the way you want so i could make it just three pixels for example and then that will give it a nice little white border inside. So there we go. And that, that looks kind of funky. In fact, actually, I might keep it that way because it, it gives it a little extra va va boom. In fact, I might even go through and change all the others to have that little three so it, it has that little effect. So you can you can do all sorts of things um, with your with your code. Let me just go down and find it in the other locations because we've had to apply, this is a different CSS uh, class name as well. And then in here, there's different class names and so on. So the last thing that I'm going to show you is the fact that I needed to tweak this category settings here. 
Okay, so again, I went into F12 to bring up my fire bug. I clicked on this to select the section, and then I could see down here that it was using a H1 tag name, which is probably uh, because this is the main page name itself. So there's always only ever one H1 tag in HTML. And then it was also using the page title class. So I knew what the page title class, uh, the, the name is now, so I knew I had to tweak it. And then over here on the right hand side in the settings, um, it can also see that there's a page header in the CSS and a page title. So here I can see all the different sizes. I can see that it was a font weight of 600 bolding, um, letter spacing has been added. It's all been transformed to uppercase the size and so on and so on and, and and so on and so on all the way down okay and you can see that it's black there as well so I can see that the the reason there's like h1 here h1 here h1 here is because one of them is pulling in html codes one of them is pulling in the css for wordpress one of them is pulling in CSS from the theme so there's lots of these like kind of conflicting sets of rules and that's why some of them are showing but they are, are literally turned off and that's all being managed by the WordPress itself so what you're looking for when you are editing in this way you are looking for the things that are showing in bold and then you kind of need to tweak them a little bit um, so you can always just right click on the section copy rule paste it in here and then tweak away and and so on so what you don't necessarily do if there's settings that you don't want to change just delete them and then just keep the ones that you are overwriting or adding to and that is basically how I ended up changing all of my my categories to be the same size text now so it's all nice and uniform as it is on these section headings here on my home page so it's kind of that consistency throughout my site and then last of all to add in this bit of code here or if you notice I've got a little bit of a bold line here same thing again it's HTML code it's literally the strong tag when you are writing your category descriptions let me just come out of here and go to categories Okay, so all I've done is use the HTML strong um, opening and closing tag and then to wrap, I've literally been able to wrap onto the next slide down by hitting return. I didn't actually have to use the HTML break for a line or break return line. Um, so again, you can tweak uh, some HTML there as you need to. Um, and then obviously I've updated and then if I come back one more step, wherever we were on our actual blog post itself. Bear us a second while it loads. Over here on the right hand side, we've got the excerpt that you can see there. And again, if you look closely, oops, sorry. I'll move myself out of the way. But if you look over here, we've got this little excerpt. I've literally put the HTML tag strong in there, wrote my sentence, finished where I wanted the strong or the bolding effect to end. I then forced a line break and then finished my sentence and that has given me this style down here of a line break and this line being bold and it just helps lift the content on the page just a little bit and the same literally the same approach for my category descriptions there and then um, that's pretty much it from me now the only other thing I was going to say is I am changing the schedule of my videos being published to YouTube they are going to be once a week now because I'm not actually getting a lot of time to develop my apps which is kind of a sort of chicken and egg scenario so um, I will be basically changing and just doing the one video pretty much from October onwards um, so that I can actually get some of my other apps developed because I've got loads of things started but I just never get any chance to get anything finished so I need to slow down the amount of time that I'm doing uh, editing videos and focus a little bit more on the actual app publications but that kind of gives you a little bit of a summary on some CSS customizations then if you are creating your own CSS styles or if you are tweaking templates you know what to do so I hope you enjoyed that video today and um, please do do subscribe to my channel there we go. Uh, stay notified and I will see you on another update real soon.